Hi guys, Basil here coming at you with another Scratch Advanced tutorial. And this is tutorial 4 and we're talking about password encryption. Now password is encryption is when you go onto a project's scripts, there won't be in the variables list, you won't be able to see um, a variable called password and then click on it and be able to find out the password so that you can cheat in the game. Let me give you an example. You're playing a platformer where the level system lets you skip levels if you know the password for them. So the final level might have a password of scratch as the password. That's not a very good password, but maybe that'd be the password. And you'd be able to download the project, go into the project's variable lists, find the variable called password, click on the variable called password and see that it says scratch, and then go back into the project and be able to skip to the last level because you know the password. Now what this does, what I've made here, basically prevents this and allows you to stop people cheating on your projects. So they won't be able to go into your project and find the variable called password and cheat using it. And it does this by creating a, an encryption for the password. So like a code that isn't written anywhere, so it's not written in the variables. And today we'll be looking at how we do this and um, first off, what we'll be doing is we'll be seeing how it works and how, if, you, if you're the owner of the project, you can cheat if you want to. That's what this is designed for. So you'll see two things on the screen. You see one called the password key up here and you see one called the encryption list down here. Now what this does is this creates a random password using these two things. Now if you were actually playing a project online, this wouldn't be visible, but this would be. You would make this not visible because um, if you leave this visible that will allow people to cheat online. Okay, so basically you've got to memorize um, the encryption list and as you can see mine spells out scratch but yours could for example spell out football or whatever um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to type in the password based on this. Okay, so pretend that this isn't on the screen. I would know that my word was scratch, and I would know that the seventh le letter of scratch is H. So for the first one, I would type in H, because up here it's a seven. Then I know that the fifth letter was a T, and so on. And I'd be able to type the whole thing in, just because I can see this list up here. And I would just keep going until I got to the last number, which is four. Now I take four and I double it and I type an eight. Okay, so what I have here is I have the actual password that I've created, which is HTCCR8. And when I type this in, as you can see, I got the password right. So what this does is it creates a new password each time that the creator of the project will know how to solve because he'll know that all he has to do is take um, each number of the password code and use the rules, so 3, R, 5, T, and so on, and he'll be able to work out the password using this, and then when he gets to the last one, he'll just type in 6 if it's free, so you always have to double it. And again, look, I can always solve this, but if someone random online goes on this project, they won't be able to see this bit, they'll only see the password key, and they won't know how to solve it, because they might try typing in um, the password key, which is 472153, but obviously they won't be able to get in because that's not what you do, but they won't know that. And the good thing about this is that it changes every time, which is good because it makes it more secure. Okay, so now you know what it does and how to actually use it if you're the owner of the project. Let's get into the scripting. Okay, so what we see here is we see set password key to um, nothing, so that's just resetting the password key, ready for a new password key, and then repeat five, set password key to join password key, pick random one to length of encryption list. Let me break this down. All that it's doing is it's adding one more number to the password key five times. So it adds five random numbers, uh, which is the first bit of the password key. Then for the last one, it adds a random number from one to four, and you know that you have to double this. So if it was free, you double it to get six. So all that this is doing is building the password key. Okay, now let's move on to the second bit, which all it is is how the project recognizes how to 
use the password key to know whether or not you got it right. So here we've got repeat until your answer equals and then it's got a big string of join things together which all this is is join item letter one of password key of encryption list. So this would mean that the first letter of your answer is the same as the first letter four of your encryption list which is scratch. So letter four of scratch is A. So if you typed in um, A you would get it right the first time and so on. So whether or not you got it right for the second letter or if you got it right for the third letter and so on. And it will keep asking you that for the password until you get it right in which case it will say play a popping sound to show that you got it right. Obviously this is just an example in your project if you use this um, it'll do more than play a popping sound, it'll probably let you through to the next level. Okay, that's basically it. Um, I've explained how this works, how you can use it, and why you should use it if you want to make your passwords on your projects more safe. Okay guys, that's what I wanted to show you today. If you liked what you saw, maybe give me a like or a subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the next video that I bring out.